Dawson's Rentals. Hey YouTube, Dawson Ryder here with what will hopefully be my last anniversary toku related video for a while. I feel like I've been doing a lot of these lately, but I had a lot of video ideas coming off the end of Geo. The lighting's making me look super red in these videos, I promise I didn't just be like, before I started. Like, I thought about Sogo and I was like, this video as you can tell by the title is about how to make a proper peanut butter sandwich. Here's the bread. I'm just kidding, I don't know where that came from. But it's about Go Kydra, because I have a Not Ultra shirt, but you can't see the Not Ultra because you can just see this. But that's an appropriate shirt. A lot of talk about anniversary series that I was talking about. Who was talking about it? That was me, I was talking about it. Kydra is often at the top of people's list. It remains a fan favorite. Even today, it's a very popular series, for me included. And it definitely can be one of those that's considered overrated to a degree, and I'll agree. But it's in my top five still personally. And I have to say, overrated or not, for my personal opinion, in terms of the anniversary toku I've seen of all of PR, all of Sentai, all of Rider, I do think it's the best anniversary series. And I am more so talking about full-on anniversary series like Gokaiju, like Geo, like Decade, where the whole series is intended to be a celebration, where they weave in the elements of the history and the shows, and it's not just like, hey, our monsters look like a Megazord, or we did one team up. So it's kind of more so talking about those three specifically. Um, and who knows, there might be stuff out there I don't know about. Maybe there's an Ultraman show or an obscure toku that blew everything out of the water with its anniversary celebration. But this is me talking about what I know about. And like I said, Gokaiger can be overrated. I think the fans kind of got obnoxious about it to a degree over the years. Again, no offense. But it's one of those things where I still like it. And I think that it deserves its praise in a lot of ways. Especially since we've seen other anniversary series completely bungle it. So, so hardcore. And I mentioned this a little bit in the top video, and I kind of saved it for this video, but I think the thing that made Gokaiger's anniversary work so well was balance and the balance between actual anniversary celebration stuff in terms of the returning cameos, Gokaiger actually existing as its own Sentai, and the characters themselves. I think in terms of the anniversary cast of like Geo and this and Decade, I think they have the most overall likable cast. Like I legit like all the Gokaijers to some degree and I feel that we got to spend at least a decent amount of time with each of them where I remember their individual stories, their individual character traits. I think it was a lot better balanced. I mentioned in the video, I'm not saying necessarily it might not be as good but I think that you could take Gokaiger out of the anniversary and just make it a pirate sentai and you'd still have a show that stood on its own. Like I said, I'm not sure how well it would hold up, like if that were an exact science, because physically time removing a show out of itself isn't an exact science, but I think you know what I'm getting at. It's kind of similar to something I've said about Dino Thunder before, that Tommy being back was great, but I honestly think Dino Thunder would have still been a good Power Rangers show if Dr. O was just some Dino Doctor and not Tommy. So it's, that's sort of the similar idea I'm trying to get at, is that I think they put enough effort into Gokaiger feeling like their own Sentai, whereas I feel that m for the most part in a lot of ways for me, Decade and Geo felt more like vehicles for the anniversary, and Geo I think had a better honest attempt at being its own show than Decade, whereas, but both of them more felt like blank slates to celebrate, whereas Gokaiger was both. You celebrated with the returning actors, with the transformations, but it still stood on its own as its own Sentai, with its own story too, that could have existed without Sentai. Like it wasn't about them traveling through time and all these another riders or another rangers or anything, or another rambles. It was about its own storyline that like I said, if you would take it out, you could have the Zangat storyline without it. And so I think it was a nice balance between having its own story that wasn't dependent on the past, but when they celebrated the past, it was great. And I remember hearing that, that Gokaiger did so well with that, that they were getting returning actors requesting to join, like they weren't supposed to have as many, and we got more. And they fit them in pretty well. And there wasn't too many points where I felt like the plot was suffering because they couldn't get somebody back or it suffered because they needed to shoehorn people in. Most of the cameos were enjoyable. I think they did a good job of honoring whatever they were homaging at the time or whatever they were bringing back. It gave you a nice taste of that series and character. That sounded weird, but you know what I mean. And I think they did a good job at it, but it never felt like it was overwhelming it or that it was like, is anniversary, doesn't matter, where it's like, well, the show kind of sucks, but they brought back this guy, so it's good. It was like both. They brought back this guy, and it was good. So I think they did a better job at balancing that. Like I said, Gokaiger's not perfect. For me, for, I mean, in general, like, I could argue that something like 
Choryuji or something has a better story, or Geki Ranger, uh, and is a little more consistent, or any. I mean, you can say that for anything, for anybody's personal opinion. And I'm not saying it's the best synth I ever made, but for me, the only real problem about it was the villains were kind of weak overall. And that's kind of a weird case, because sometimes I think if you're good enough in other aspects, that's still okay. Marvel movies are notorious for that, and after the 15,000th same one-note villain, it can get old. But some stories for me, like some Marvel movies or even some Sentai, if the other aspects, such as the characters and the story, are good enough, I can kind of forgive the villains being bad. I'm not saying if the villains weren't better that it, I would like that. Like, could we make the villains better in Gokaiju and make an even better show? That would be awesome. But I think Gokaiju did enough right where that didn't upset me that much. Just to use two examples of my personal taste, I thought both Juoger and Ryu Soldier kind of have weak villains as of this moment. Who knows, Ryu Soldier could blow us away after this video. But in terms of just my opinion right now, I think they both have weak villains and both shows are kind of meh a lot of the time. And so then you notice it a lot more. But with Gokaiju, I thought their own characters and their own anniversary stuff and their own stories were enough that I didn't care so much about the villain stuff, so that really didn't bother me. But that's not really what this is about. The bottom line is, for this video, I don't want to make it too long, but I think Gokaiger is the best anniversary series we've seen so far, bar none. Not perfect, but it did the best balance at doing good anniversary celebrations, but also making its own show, and I think making both meaningful. But what do you guys think? Do you think Gokaiju is the best anniversary series? Do you think there's a better one? Would you like, what would you like to see from the future of an anniversary series? Would you like to see them try to emulate Gokaiju? Elements of it, sort of a hodgepodge, or something completely different? Let me guys, let me guys know in the comments. Anyway, until next time, before like, comment, subscribe, and climb the steps and ring that bell so you can get the notifications for my videos. Thanks guys, Dawson Ryder, signing out.